Hi, we're still talking about transmission lines and in this video we are going to look at the load end and we're going to work on calculating the reflection coefficient. So, you know, there's a mismatch between the load impedance and the impedance of the line and uh, this will cause some reflection and some unusual things happen that you might not be expecting. So let's look at that. All right, so what we're going to say here is that we have this transmission line, excuse me, All right, we've got the, we've got this transmission line, and uh, and it is characterized with impedance. We'll say z naught, right? So we've got that characteristic impedance of the line, and then we're going to say that it's terminated with impedance z l. We're going to say that this goes in the direction of the z axis lots of z's here and then uh, we're going to say that z equals zero right there okay so we're placing the load at z equals zero now as we showed the voltage at any point on the line is v zero plus e to the minus j beta z so in phase or notation that is like this Okay, that the solution is a wave. So we're assuming a time harmonic wave, and so this is in phasor notation. Now remember that the characteristic impedance of the line is defined as Z, uh, V0 plus over I0 plus, and this was also what we showed was that this was the negative of the left traveling waves like this. And so because that's the case we can write IS as V0 plus over Z0 minus V0 minus over Z0 like this. Okay. All right, now at the load, which is, remember, at z equals zero for convenience, at the load, so I'll just write at z equals zero, we have that vs, then if I plug in z equals zero, this is v zero plus plus v zero minus. So at the load, then, the voltage that I get is a sum of the right traveling wave plus its reflection right there at the at the load and also at z equals zero the current we can make a similar argument is v zero plus minus v zero minus over z zero like that and the ratio so this is the voltage at the load and this is the current at the, or through the load and so the ratio of those two things v s over i s at the load the, the the ratio of those two things must be the load impedance, right? From Ohm's law. And so this is Z0 times V0 plus minus uh, plus V0 minus over V0 plus minus V0 minus, like that, the ratio of those two things. Excellent. So now notice that I can take uh, V I can take ZL, the load impedance, divided by the characteristic impedance, and I can I can express this a little bit differently. If I divide everything by V0 plus, I get 1 plus V0 minus over V0 plus over 1 minus V0 minus over V0 plus, and this implies that ZL minus, uh, sorry, Z, yeah, ZL minus ZL. So I'm just cross multiplying here. Is equal to Z0 plus Z0 like this, right, from cross multiplying. And then if I arrange this, rearrange this a little bit, this implies that ZL minus Z0 
equals this guy. And then finally, what we see here is that the V0 minus over V0 plus. So this represents uh, the now the, the negative traveling wave, so the left traveling wave, per per energy or you know per per uh, voltage that was sent from the right traveling wave is equal to ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus C0. So this is what we call the reflection coefficient now for the transmission line. We're going to use capital gamma again. Okay, that's the reflection coefficient. And again, this this reflection coefficient is due to the fact that the impedance here uh, is you know the material essentially then the impedance is different than the material for the transmission line so when we know already from our discussion of plane waves that when a wave an electromagnetic wave hits the boundary of two different media then we have some part of it that's reflected and some part of it that's transmitted right now to help us understand this reflection coefficient let's look at some special cases of uh, of ZL and and of the reflection coefficient. So suppose suppose that the load impedance was infinity. That means that the load is an open circuit, right? So if you replace ZL with infinity here, what do we get? Think about it. Go ahead and pause the video. What do we get for a reflection coefficient? Well, in this case, uh, negative ZL or negative Z0 and positive Z0 don't matter because ZL is so large. So then we have ZL divided by ZL, and so this makes a reflection coefficient of one. So so this means that the voltage is completely reflected, which is exactly what we would expect if we had an open circuit. Why would anything be absorbed here? Right, and power is not going to certainly not going to be absorbed by anything there. So the the voltage makes its way down the line. Oh, I got nowhere to go, so it's completely re reflected back. Nice. So that's one special case. Suppose that ZL were zero, which would make it a short circuit. All right, pause the video if you want to think about it. What would you get as a reflection coefficient in this case? Okay, so if I plug, hopefully you pl uh, pause the video, but if I plug in ZL equals zero, then I get negative Z zero divided by Z zero, and so that's negative one. So what this means is that the voltage is reflected with a phase change. Um, more on that later. But, um, well, actually, well, we would expect that, to be honest, because if we've got voltage coming down this way, then at the load here, if the load is a short, the reflection should be exactly negative 1, so that the positively traveled wave and the negatively traveling wave interfere to make 0, because we, can, we, we should not have a voltage across that short. Okay, now suppose, as another special case, that ZL were equal to the characteristic impedance of the line, what do we get in this case? In this case, the numerator is 0 and the denominator is non-zero, and so gamma, the reflection coefficient, is 0. This means that there are no reflections. Um, this is usually what you want. The load, we would say, is matched to the line and the whole wave then is transmitted that's what you want you want all of the voltage that you've launched down the line to make it to your load you want that load to absorb all of the power not reflect it back and uh, so this is related to maximum power transfer and it makes sense that there would be nothing reflected back because as far as the as far as the wave is concerned if if this if the line has the same um, uh, impedance as the load, then the w the wave sees kind of the same thing and the same type of material. So of course there would be no 
um, reflections in that case, right? Great. Now, uh, in terms of the reflection coefficient, uh, we can write the voltage as this here in phasor form. So we would have the amplitude of the right traveling wave, and then the amplitude of the left traveling wave would be gamma uh, times that amplitude. Remember, gamma was defined as V0 minus over V0 plus E to the J beta Z. Okay, so I can factor this out, V0 plus that is, and I would have, if I rearrange this a little bit, I would have gamma E to the J beta Z plus E to the minus j beta z like that. Now, let's let's consider again these special cases to uh, just get a good sense of what's happening. So let's go back up to this case here where the load resistance or the load impedance was infinite, that is an open circuit. So in that case we said we had a reflection of 1. So when um, when zl is equal to infinity, vs we have, a, again, we have a reflection coefficient of 1, so Vs is V0 plus times E to the J beta Z plus E to the minus J beta Z. So what does that look like? That thing in parentheses, that's a cosine from Euler's relation. So this is actually twice a cosine, 2 V0 plus cosine of beta Z like this. And uh, since you know we, we're dealing with phasors, so we can bring in the time dependence, we can write v, Z and, v of Z and T is the real part of Vs e to the j omega T, right? Bring back the time dependence. We have, this is 2 V0 plus cosine of beta z cosine of omega t. And again, that's for when we have an open circuit at the load. We've seen this before. This is a standing wave, and this guy's amplitude is twice the voltage that was launched. It's twice the voltage that was launched. That should be surprising. So if you connect like maybe DC, you connect like 10 volts or something, you you could expect something larger than 10 volts on your line, in this case 20 volts, right? <laughs> and that's due to the reflection. And so the right traveling wave and the, the, the reflected left traveling wave interfere constructively to make this wave, uh, and this is a standing wave, and it appears not to move. So um, we've we've drawn standing waves before, so here is Z, here's V of Z, T. And so what we would have is something like this, where we'd have a wave, okay? And this amplitude, again, is twice what we launch. Okay, that would be at T equals zero. If I plug in T equals zero here, I would have two V zero plus times the cosine of beta times Z. And then if we wait some time, what we would see is something like this. And if we wait some time, we would see maybe all zero on the line. And then if we wait some more time, we would see this. If we wait some more time, we would see this. But notice these nodes here, it's, this is a standing wave. The nodes are not moving as, as time changes. So the wave is not moving. It's a standing wave. Interesting. And, it's, and even more interesting than a standing wave is that, again, the amplitude of that standing wave can be uh, twice the voltage that you sent down. Now, uh, we can make this a similar argument, and I'll, I'll let you verify this on your own time. But um, we could look at when we have a short circuit. And when we have a short circuit, we also get a standing wave. But this time, the node is at the load, like this. So this would be like um, 
one point in time and we have to have zero volts at the load because we have a short circuit. So just to emphasize that this was ZL equals infinity and this plot I'm drawing now is ZL equals zero. So this is for one moment of time. We would have a wave like this. We have to have zero volts there. But then as we let time elapse, we still have to have zero volts there. And what we get is something like this. And then maybe maybe another value of time, we have zero volts everywhere. And then another value of time we have here. And another value of time we have here. Like this. And again, uh, this maximum is at 2V0+. plus. We have twice the voltage on the line that we sent. And again we have a standing wave. These nodes here don't move. The wave does not move. It does not propagate this way or that way down the line. It just stands still, right? So that's that's something that you uh, should be aware of, especially the fact that we can have more voltage on the line um, than what we sent. Okay, now I'm going to erase those graphs because I want to talk about the third case then, which was when we match the load impedance to the line impedance. So that was when ZL equals Z0. In this case, a standing wave will not be formed. Um, it, would, it would actually be kind of silly to, to expect a standing wave in this case because the load impedance, when you match, uh, it looks like a continuation of the line to the, to the wave. It just looks like a continuation then. And so, um, of course, the wave is going to propagate, right? We, we don't expect the wave to stand still in that case. Okay, so as we've seen now, we can have more voltage on the line than we, what we intended on, what, you know, what we sent. And this should be transmission line termination by the way, not terminate. <laughs> okay, and so um, we, we, we can have more voltage and that's usually not what we want. And so we can define something called the viswar, V-S-W-R, pronounced viswar. And this tells us the ratio of the maximum line voltage to the minimum line voltage appearing at any time. And uh, it turns out that that maximum per minimum is 1 plus the magnitude of gamma, the reflection coefficient, divided by 1 minus the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. So that's how we're going to uh, calculate the visoir. So now, let's think about uh, when we had an open circuit, remember that? What was the um, reflection coefficient in that case? Well, remember when we have an open circuit, everything gets reflected, nothing can be absorbed. So we had a reflection coefficient of 1. So what is the visoire in this case? The visoire is infinity. Okay. So uh, in that case, you know, even if we put in a little bit of voltage, we're going to get quite a bit out, right? Uh, uh, you know, as much as the physics will allow, the line will break down at some point. Um, also, when we have a short circuit, we had a reflection coefficient of minus one, and the visoire in that case is also infinity. So the line would break down at this point. We <laughs> we want to terminate it with something other than infinity or zero. Now, that third special case when the impedance is matched, right, in this case the reflection coefficient was zero. There was no reflection. And so the visoire in that case is what? one. So that means, again, the, the ratio of maximum line voltage to minimum line voltage at any time is one. So this is what you want. This uh, means that we have, you know, we, we, um, we're not going to have too much voltage at any point on the line. Um, 
and and we want to avoid having lots of voltage on the line because then the line could break down our our equipment could break down at that point okay so um, that's that gives you an idea about the reflection uh, at the at the load end um, and coming up next we're going to look closely at the uh, the input impedance what the impedance would look like to the source I'll see you then